You're tuned to Radio Kidnappers, the voice of Hawke's Bay. This is a program called Food for Life, and it's our pleasure, as always, to have in the hot seat Heather Barrow. How are you going, Heather? I'm really well. Ken, how are you? Oh, I'm pretty good. Thank you very much for asking. Now, Heather, you're a clinical nutritionist. Just to remind our listeners what you do. Yeah, so I see people with a variety of uh, health conditions, from wanting to lose weight to stressed and overworked to skin conditions, digestive issues, hormones. The list goes on. And you do uh, exercise programs, all that sort of stuff as well? I do. I do teach a few fitness classes, yes. Yeah. Zumba. You still do Zumba? Zumba? I do, yeah. Dance aerobics twice yeah. a week in the mornings. Wow. You're so good, Heather. Yeah, <laughs> now, I enjoy it. The last couple of months we've been talking about uh, keto, and we just digressed just a little bit. I just wanted to tell you that my daughter has taken it on board. She's gone completely keto. Okay. And she has lost in two weeks six kgs. Well done for her. And just feeling a whole lot better, but yeah, yeah she hasn't wavered one bit. So it's a, it's a diet that is working very well for her. And yes. uh, like I said, we've spoken about it over the last couple of months. So if someone's interested in um, following that keto nutrition plan, best mm -hmm. to come see you. Yeah, I mean, I can calculate according to your age and your height and your weight exactly what your macronutrient profile should be. So mm -hmm. your breakdown of fats, carbs, and proteins. Um, and then we can put you on a plan. And, um, you know, once you get to your ideal weight, that's the time when we need to talk about reintroduction of certain foods. Yes. Because there are healthy foods that are higher in carbs that you're omitting during sure. the keto diet. So bring those back in and then something called keto cycling. So this is sustainable long term. Mm -hmm. You're not putting all the weight back on and yeah. binging on those carbs yeah. that you've been avoiding. Yeah. Because it really is a, it's a lifestyle change keto, isn't it? Yes, yeah, it and is. Yeah, you can't sort of think, okay, I might have an apple, I might have a peach, I might have an orange. Yeah, yeah. it breaks that, That's the right. ketosis. Indeed. Okay, now today we're going to talk about a new era for nutrition. What's that all about? Yeah, I've just, I don't know, I've been seeing it more and more, um, you know, in the media and schools and places of business that times are changing. Mm -hmm. You know, some of the best-selling books today are about health. And, and diet and nutrition. Um, you know, Dr. Libby, who hasn't heard of Dr. Libby? Um, all of her workshops sell out. Yep. Um, there, there's health promotion messages everywhere, um, campaigns across mass media, um, health dr districts, um, you know, step challenges, um, schools planting gardens, teaching kids more about um, agriculture and, and, you know, what you're eating and feeding health. So I just feel like there's more of a focus now yeah. on that message. Why do you think that is? I mean, if we wind the clock back to when I was, you're much younger, you know, talking about 20, 30, 40 years now. We didn't care, we just got on with life. We did a bit of this, did a bit of that, but you're, you're right, now it's an industry, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. I think just with technology and how it's changed and the pressures and the demands mm. and um, the growing population and you know the food industry trying to keep up with feeding everyone, mm. um, I think there's just been a lot of you know mass produced food types out there and yep. it's just making people sick. Did you hear that uh, interesting statistic on the uh, the news a couple of days back? As a country we spent 11 billion dollars a year on takeaways. I didn't hear that. That's a That's lot of money isn't it? 11 billion? Yeah. That's frightening to me. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it might be. I mean there are some healthy takeaways. Yes indeed. So I'll just they, yeah, they consider must be, that. They're included in there as well. <laughs> Okay, now you've got a bit of a, a slideshow there you're going to do a read yeah, from. Tell I'm us all about following it. following some notes. So yeah, just some examples. You know, big, even big name companies are starting to get behind it, obviously, because they don't want to miss out. Yeah. So um, just some in New Zealand, like um, Pizza Hut, for instance, has started to eliminate their trans fats, mm. um, MSG, and reduce the salt in their pizzas. Um, Subway, Campbell's, Kellogg's, they're removing artificial flavors, colors, preservatives. Um, Tyson, which is an American one, they're not stopping using antibiotics in chickens, GMO free hot dog buns, like all sorts of, um, you know, changes to yeah. make it healthier and more appealing to the more health conscious population. Does it, uh, it certainly does that. Does it taste the same? Does it taste as good? You know, there's nothing yeah. quite like a bit of fat, is it, to make it feel, or Absolutely. there's nothing like sugar or salt to make stuff. No. Does, does it, do you think it does? Taste as good? Yeah, I think so. You don't need all that MSG, that artificial stuff to flavor enhance, you know. If your taste buds are in working order, and they are if you're, you know, pretty healthy, then you should get plenty of taste <laughs> from these foods. Do you have salt? I can't imagine having a meal without salt. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, add, I add salt to my cooking. Um, 
and one tip though when you go out to eat mm -hmm. I see people and, and the waitress brings out the, the food and they haven't even tasted it and they automatically reach for the salt and they just assume that it needs salt yes taste it first because That's there's me. usually a lot of salt when you go out to eat in foods yeah and then you're just ODing for sure and is one salt better than another um, I prefer yeah a natural like rock salt that's iodized yes. or kelp salt you know something with iodine in it it's mm. a good way to get iodine since so many New Zealanders are deficient anyway yeah anyway we digressed yes yeah so um, <laughs> uh, what I'm noticing as well is the medical profession is coming under a lot of pressure so there's an increased demand on on service um, the numbers that they're seeing coming through their doors are more and more um, an interesting a statistic that um, physicians um, have uh, the chance of dying by suicide are 70% higher wow. than the general population, which I found really alarming. Um, and I often uh, have clients come in and just say, you know, they couldn't get a hold of their doctor or, um, you know, the doctor didn't help. And, and nothing against doctors because I think they, we are, they are necessary and needed in the, in the field and they do a lot of good. But I just think the demands are too high mm -hmm. and they're not being met. Um, I had a client the other day, she just moved here and she was trying to find a doctor and she called around and they said, sorry, we're not taking any more patients, we're full. Yeah, I know, it's, it's, a, it's hard to believe, isn't it, in this day and age. Mm. Wonder why, why is it though, I mean, and it's an interesting point that you make that uh, if we just wanted to take back just a little bit that uh, we're saying that the, uh, the nutrition industry is rampant. Mm. However, obesity is worse than it's ever been. Mm. What do you put that down to? I think what what yeah what I just talked about just um, cheap food and people time crunching you know got mm. ten minutes for lunch I'm gonna hit up Mc, McDonald's yeah you know it's just convenience really yeah um, we have to prioritize um, you know preparing healthy foods it does take time and a lot of people just you know I understand you know there's a, there's a lot of pressures today but we really need to kind of c come to grips and understand what we're feeding ourselves is killing us. Mm. Um, and I think there is that shift in thinking, like people are realizing they don't have to wait for some major illness sure. before they take control of their health. And I guess taking control of your health is a good segue into what you were just talking about, about mm -hmm. going to the doctor. You know, if, you, if you're healthy, you don't need to go to the doctor so much, do you? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I don't, I don't really even have a doctor per se. Mm -hmm. I don't really feel the need to go to a doctor. Um, if I get sick, which... I try not to. It does happen once in a sure. while. Um, I do try and take a natural approach um, first and foremost. So I can't remember the last time I was on antibiotics. Thank goodness. When I was on the child, I was on them all the time. But. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I, I'm the same. You know, I'm sort of a, a picture of health, really. People get annoyed when I say, oh, I haven't been to the doctors for years. But it's just some of us are lucky to like that, though, aren't we? I mean, some might yeah. say, oh, well, you were just lucky. Would you say you were lucky or it's because it look, you look after yourself? Uh, I don't think it's luck. I think, uh, yeah, it's a matter of looking after yourself. I mean, you can't um, negate the science behind what proper nutrition does for the body and the cells in the body. So, yes. yeah, it's just taking that time. It's all about nutrition and exercise, isn't it? Yeah, and, and realizing, you know, what, what you eat, food, and your lifestyle is, is your medicine. And I think, like, that is the message, a new era for nutrition. More and more people are getting that message, and they're seeking out help from people like myself. Um, and they're getting answers. Yeah. Yeah. So looking at the plan that you've got in front of you right now, what, what would be the beauty of following that? F following? A, a new era for nutrition. You know, why, why is there a new era for nutrition? Yeah. So, yeah, like I said, people are sick and tired of feeling sick and tired and are looking for answers and realizing prevention is better than a cure as well. So they're, mm. you know, starting to get on top of this. You know, if the numbers come back high for cholesterol and the doctor says, here's a statin, well, no, I don't want to be put on, <laughs> on a medication. I wonder what I can do naturally to lower it. And they might come see someone like myself. Um, uh, interestingly, when I did my research, I was just curious the top 10 kind of killers, really. You yeah. know, why, why are people dying? And the number one killer is heart disease. Mm -hmm. And in 2015, 8.8 .8 million people died of that, wow. which is 15% of the deaths globally. And if you think about the causes for heart disease, you know, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, smoking, um, diabetes, being overweight, all of that is preventable and reversible. So the number one killer that took 15% of the deaths worldwide is reversible. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And boils down to just what you're saying, nutrition, exercise. 
Yeah, n not smoking, ma maintaining a healthy weight, being active. Mm. Um, so, I mean, that, that's huge. Um, you know, we think about even diabetes. So diabetes, there was a statistic on diabetes in New Zealand as well, I heard. I can't remember it, but like one in four in New Zealanders are going to be diabetic by such and such in a few years. Can't, don't quote me on that. Um, but again, that's another one. 1 1.6 million people died in 2015 of diabetes. And that is, that's reversible. Why do you think though, I mean you see these people every day, why do you think when we look in the mirror, we see a fat guy or a fat gal looking back at us, why don't we do something about it? We know what we're putting in our mouth isn't good for us, yet uh, we need to be told to come and see you. Well, why do we need to be told that? Why can't we just look in the mirror and say, mm, Mr. Fat Guy, I'm going to do something about this? I think it's in here. Mm. I don't think it helps to be told actually. That that might even have the reverse effect and <laughs> may, <laughs> might make people not want to come. I think it has to finally reach a boiling point for them personally. You know, what's their background and upbringing? What were they told when they were younger? What's their relationship to food? Um, all of that, the mindset has a huge part to play in it. So I think when they finally reach a point of, okay, this is me, I'm getting sick if I don't get help, I want help and I'm, I'm willing to make those changes. Once they get there, that's the time I want to see them. Yes. Not when someone says, really, you're not looking too flash. You yeah. need to go see a nutritionist. <laughs> Although you raised another good point a bit earlier. When we go to the doctors, the doctor might say, yeah, no, I'm going to put you on this, I'm going to put you on that. You mentioned statins. Most of us wouldn't question the doctor. We wouldn't that's say, right. hang on a minute. What about recommending that I go and see Heather Barrow, who's a clinical nutritionist? We would just say, oh, thanks, doc. We'd go on, we'd get the prescription for them, we'd take that. We wouldn't even think twice about uh, having a chat with them about seeing you, would we? Why wouldn't we do that? Yeah, I mean, why, why not trust doctors? You know, they have go through a lot of study. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, very little of their study, if any, is, is around nutrition. Um, a lot of it is through, you know, the big pharmaceuticals and they're, you know, giving you a prescription. And like I said, they're overworked. You get 10, 15 minutes with them. Exactly. They're not getting that full health history that they really need to, really um, giving you that full health check that you need to really say, okay, let's, this is the root cause of this issue. Let's look at that. Why do you have that high cholesterol? Which is a good point. When we mm. come and see you, you're more, more holistic that we're not getting five or ten minutes with you. We're getting a whole hour or more, aren't we? Hour and a half. Hour and a half, wow. Yep. You could tell your whole life story. <laughs> Sometimes I do hear that. <laughs> That's fine. I like hearing you know, about your background and you know, yeah. what's, what's happened in your life. Okay, well, let's come back um, to your, your, your ten, 10 points on your list there. What, what else have you got in there? Um, well, those are the only two the statistics that I thought I'd bring up today. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, yeah, heart disease and diabetes, I think when we understand why we eat, you know, it's not just to, to keep going throughout the day, it's actual fuel to nourish the cells in the body and remembering that we are cellular. You know, we can't see inside, um, but there's 37 trillion cells yes. that are waiting for these nutrients. So McDonald's is not going to give you those nutrients. Um, KFC is not going to give you those nutrients. <laughs> you have to think, is it, has it come from the soil? Has it come from the earth? That is what draws the nutrients because they come from the soil. Sure. What about those ads that you see, um, you know, let's take Subway for instance. I remember a few years back there was a really fat guy who lived on Subway for, it might have been a year, I might be wrong there. The weight dropped off him mm. and he, he did it only by eating subs. And I guess when you look at what they put in a sub, it can be very healthy for you, can't it? Sure can, yeah. Absolutely. You're getting uh, usually some sort of protein, so they, I think they have tuna and chicken mm. subs. Um, they're usually putting on some sort of lettuce, tomato, yeah. olives, pickles. Yeah, so what's wrong um, with a Big Mac? Uh, well, Big Mac, one, well, in New Zealand it's probably a little bit better, mm -hmm. I should state, because if you look at the cattle in the States, you know, they are pumped with all sorts of growth hormones, caged in these little troughs fed GMO uh, corn. Um, but in New Zealand, we do have free range beef, which is wonderful. So I'm, I'm assuming that's the beef that McDonald's uses in New Zealand. Yes, I'd like to hope so, wouldn't we? I would hope so. Um, hopefully that won't change someday. Um, but you're also looking at, um, you know, refined flour. So you've got a white sort of bun. Mm -hmm. um, there's absolutely no nutrients in that. Usually it's loaded with, I haven't had a Big Mac in a long time, no. so I'm, I'm get, seeing you know, guessing here based off what I see, you know, on TV uh, with all sorts of sauces and um, 
mayonnaise yeah. and whatever else. Um, and usually there's not just one burger, it's like, you know, layered. Yeah. What I normally so. do when I go to McDonald's, and I don't do it very often, but I normally buy four hamburgers. Okay. And I throw the buns of three of them away and just put the meat patties in one. Okay. And, <laughs> <laughs> see how many, so, so you're having like, a triple burger. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Are you trying the keto diet too, Ken? <laughs> well, look, I'll tell you what, I'd do that keto diet at the drop of a hat if you didn't have to give up um, potatoes. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, or rice. Yeah, I just love those two things. Hard to get around that. But yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, okay, so with that meal, you're getting you're getting a lot of protein. But remember too, red meat, nothing nothing wrong with it. No. It is the hardest to digest. So I hope you're chewing those triple burgers yeah, as well. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it is really acidic too. Red meat is very acidic and yeah. so is a white bun. So to counterbalance that, if you're having that with a nice, you know, salad, there you go. Who has salad? Who you. does? You do not have salad. <laughs> oh God, I couldn't stand eating salad. <laughs> but oh, look, I no. think I think the main point that you were trying to raise uh, in every show that is everything in moderation, isn't it? Yeah. You know, yeah. You can have a bit of the bad stuff. Yeah. You can have a donut. You can have a Big Mac. But you got to get out there. You got to be beating the feet on the street. You got to be doing some sort of exercise, dancing, cycling. Um, but it's a matter of looking in the mirror and deciding that's what you yeah. need to do, isn't it? Yes, and a good example of that, and I just, my post on Facebook the other, um, yesterday, on Sunday it was Father's Day, and I went out and um, took my husband out, and I had a fish burger yep. with fries. Yum. And I haven't Look had one that. in a while, and you know what, I just enjoyed every bite, and I thought, I this is did. one meal. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah, it's you like know? a reward, isn't it? It, yeah, Treat and it, it tasted quite good. Yeah, <laughs> I bet it <laughs> so, Yeah, everything in moderation. And um, remember, if you're eating like that all the time, though, your gut bacteria will start to change and you actually start craving those unhealthy foods. So it's hard to kind of break that cycle yes. if you're eating McDonald's and, you know, those addictive um, properties and signals that it sends to the brain. Give me more. Yeah. I wonder, you know, I mean, I hear what you're saying there, but I mean, I'm just your average guy and... Uh, I always used to like that uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken hot and spicy, and I could just eat the skin. But you know, uh, I haven't had Kentucky Fried Chicken for must be getting on for ten years. Um, All right. Just for the reason that I think, oh well, okay, I know it's there, but it's not a food. Isn't a drug to me. But a lot of people imply that food is a drug and that they're only having the bad stuff because they're. It's like a drug. Do, yeah. do you go along with that or? Yep. Absolutely. Really? Yeah, it releases a, um, a hormone called dopamine, mm -hmm. um, and it's that feel-good kind of, uh, yeah, I want more. And the brain remembers, hey, this, this feels good, and it goes back and it just it keeps wanting more. Yeah. Um, and dopamine's released when you do things, you know, with your family, like, oh, this feels good to be with my family. Sure. But it also is released with food. Yes. And then there's addictive um, patterns. I wonder as you get older, and I've just noticed it over the last few years because I am getting older, that uh, you can't beat home cooking. Home uh, cooking. Yeah, and uh, you know, if we say, oh, should we have a takeaway or should we have home cooking? And apart from my wife, you know, saying, oh, yeah, it'd be good to have a break every once in a while from cooking. But uh, I just find that, and, and it's a bit like you mentioned, you know, you can get your flavors from your herbs and your spices, which you don't necessarily get with a takeaway. But I think if you learn to appreciate home cooking more, yeah, you wouldn't be going to, to get those takeaways. I bet you're a yeah. good cook. I enjoy cooking. Uh, I never cooked when I was younger. Like mm. at university, I didn't even cook. I just made a bunch of salads, literally, and lived off of salads and meat. How boring that would be. Yeah, but I, I was too busy at university yeah. with study and stuff. But um, yeah, I love cooking. And um, I, th you know, when I go away on holiday and you eat out all the time, it's nice to start. And then you think, oh, I'm really getting sick of this. Yes, and you, you can't just wait. want a home cooked meal. That's right. That's a funny old thing, isn't it? Mm. So there you go. It's not a drug to you. Um, commercial food and it's not a drug to me are we different from everyone else well we're probably not having it that much yep. to create that kind of cycle behavior of wanting more and more mm -hmm. I mean that tasted great on Sunday yes. and sure I could eat it again right now but I know hey it's not the best food for me it's gonna be a treat yeah okay yeah. so people listening to this program who might be looking at them are think yeah I'm a bit porky you know, what am I gonna do about it? what what would be your better advice for them uh, well, I'd say come see someone like myself, yep. get a get a full consultation. Um, that's my basic service is a nutrition consultation. I like to say it's like a war in a fitness for the body. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I'm looking at all of the body systems, um, your current diet, your lifestyle, what you do for work, giving you a stress test, 
Um, we're talking about eliminations um, and at any other test, cholesterol, uric acid, blood glucose, blood pressure, zinc, iodine, you know, so it's really, it covers a lot. Yeah. Um, and you'll get plenty of information to walk away with um, to start making positive changes. Do you tell it like it is to say, whoo, you're a big boy? Oh, I don't know that I've used those. <laughs> no, but, you, that you, you, but you don't need them in any, any doubt that you know, they really need to get active right now. Usually what I find in the consultation is it speaks for itself. Mm -hmm. You know, just um, even looking at someone's tongue and saying, way, you know, I see, you know, yellow on the tongue means mm -hmm. liver stagnation. Yeah. Um, and then I can order some blood work and we can, you know, kind of confirm what I'm finding in the consultation as well. I guess the fact that they've come to see you, they're halfway there anyway. Absolutely. That's the first step. And I think that's the hardest step is actually making an appointment and, and walking through the doors. Yes, indeed. I promise I'm really friendly. She is. Um, I'll friendly. make you feel really comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're just about out of time now. You want to tell us about uh, some health checks that are happening locally? Yeah. So, I mean, my passion is to get people really thinking about their health. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm located at G's Pharmacy. That's where my clinic is. So we're having a health check day. Um, it's in two weeks from today. Um, so it's actually Tuesday the 18th of September, 9 to 3, no bookings needed, you just show up and you get three very important health checks, um, so your blood sugars, um, cholesterol checked and blood pressure. So this is just really me trying to reach out to the public and, and get to know your numbers, take control of your health um, and yeah, see, see where you are and if, if any of these numbers are high, um, I can give you, I will give information so they can help correct it. Good on you Heather, uh, just remind our listeners what your phone number is and where we can come and see you and when we can come and see you. Yeah, so um, I'm Heather at foodforlife.co.nz. Happy to have a free chat if you, uh, there's something you want to talk about on 027-812-5071. As was our pleasure, you look after yourself, talk to the same time, same place next time. Thanks, Ken, you too.